All right, I got three uh, brand new Texas Star 667s, uh, V's, uh, for uh, BRB Electronics. We're going to do some modifications to these bad boys and, uh, and get them back so uh, they can get find some uh, lucky homes. <laughs> so I'll be back. Alrighty. Here's the first one. It appears that these have already been converted, so it doesn't look like I'll be converting them. Alright. Alrighty. Alright. We'll go ahead and open up these next two and get started. And we will be back. Alrighty, here's the first one. These are uh, these are the product line where they tried out the uh, 1200 Pico Farad SMD capacitors right here. As far as my knowledge, I believe they went back to metals again, which is better. But uh, I'm gonna show you, give you an example. Even the uh, the factory can make a mistake. Take a look at this. Take a look at the uh, MOSFET section. You know, you had to have insulators in between the uh, back of the MOSFET to ground. It's like one fell down in there. And I bet you, bet you were about to put it on and lost it and didn't know where it went. And went and grabbed another one out of the bin. Right there. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to go ahead and get that out of there. It ain't hurting nothing, but still, you don't need that in there. It'll probably get loose and you'll hear something jingling around. All right. Just about got it. There it is. Booger's kind of hard to get my. I might use some needle nose, but anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, everything looks good. So, we're doing a power wire upgrade for this all the way to the back of the transformers, full power wire upgrade. And uh, I think we're throwing some Andersons on it too. I'll take a look at the uh, work order one more time. But, we'll be back. Brand spanking new, fresh off the hot plate. Texas Star 667 V. Alrighty, here's the second one. Everything looks good. Uh, not too sure why. Looks like somebody unsoldered that and did not solder it back. This basically is your your attenuator that's in operation at all times, no matter where you're at, high, low, medium, or whatever. Um, my wild guess, maybe whoever converted this unsoldered that and forgot to solder it back. So I will solder that back. Um, some models don't actually need them. But uh, I'll check it out and see. So here is the second model, or the second one, excuse me. Alrighty. Yeah, so you can tell this is a DEI model. This capacitor right here is a 220 picofarad cap. It's because the input tune. The input impedance of DEIs are a little different than Toshiba's, and they normally do tune, tune down a little lower. And, uh, you see, uh, Texas Star is going back to the box style caps. Put, 
filter caps. Really, whatever is cheaper. It works the same, I guess. Alrighty. On to the third one. Alrighty, here's your third one. Everything looks good. Just want to kind of check them out before I got started. So there they are. So let's start and get doing some modification. I'll be back. Alrighty. Got all these bad boys uh, done. Got all the power wire upgrades done. All the way to the back of the transformer. Just to show, so you'll know, these, these were, these were being used to distribute the DC power from this little pad over to the transformer using a wire size about this, about 12 gauge. It basically comes in with 10 gauge, breaks off with 12, and then this board over here is actually powered by the lead of the diode. This diode right here, very small lead. We're talking about like 26 gauge or something, 28 gauge. And of course, you know, this, this will definitely do it. This is adequate, etc. But there's always an improvement that can, make, can be made. Would you feel better with this or with this? <laughs> I think that's a pretty self-explainable question. And uh, so now we've got, went from this, which is around 28 gauge, I believe. I need to check that sometime so I'll know 100%. It's small. And also I need to make me a video and get my in in inducted, get my LCR meter out and sh actually show you the, uh, the amount of uh, inductance now so we went from there to 14 gauge okay and this right here is 16 gauge on the driver section okay so we've thickened up on the wires to help a little bit uh, more current flow the box is gonna be able to stay a little cooler especially under them high current demands and uh, also just just something that I always do with every Every take to start, it comes to me like this. I always like to take the section right here. Okay, this right here is your combiner for both two pill sections, two transistor section. This right here is combining the output of both. Then your combined output power, which could be up into the excessive of 700 to 1000 watt range, all matter about what you're doing. I wouldn't be running them at 1000 watts, but they can do it. Is it flows on this path right here, this trace, and comes all the way down up to this switch, and then from this switch over this way to the relay, and from the relay, it goes up under the board of a trace to this coax right here, and then comes out, okay? Instead of having a paper thin copper uh, paper paper thin copper path it just makes me feel better to just thicken it up with solder just give it a little bit more thickness a little bit more current stability it, it makes me feel that it's just something I've always done something I've always done here recently I actually did that on an amplifier and I actually noticed a little bit of power increase but normally I don't check it's just something I just do just one of them little bitty things you can do, man. Any, anything that can have the possibility of helping. So, All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the Anderson connectors put on here. And then we'll be back. And I got a fan kit to put on one of them, too. And uh, this one right here is just uh, riding along with the ride. This, is, uh, th this, this isn't with these three. But since I was already doing this, this needed the same thing. Go ahead and kill four birds with one stone. We'll be back.